I've done a layout, a drawing, and I need to find critical pick, uh, points to be able to swing my radiuses. So based on the drawing here, this point is the uh, center of the shallow end. This is the center of the deep end. I know that there's 20 feet between these two points, these pins. And then I also found this pin here, which allows me to swing that radius. And then I also have a pin here, which allows me to swing this radius. Once I have those points and I, and I paint it, you'll see me paint it out, I'll just estimate these little spots here. We could calculate that, but that's not nearly as important. So here we have, if we look at it, this point right here is this pin. These two pins are the center of the pool, each of the radius of the pool. This one and this one right here. Those I'll swing my radiuses to get my outside edge of the pool. And then this pin right here gives me that back bump out of the pool itself. So what I'll do now is I know that that's a seven foot radius arc there and that's a nine foot radius arc there. I'll paint those circles in first. That gives us a basic length of the pool and then I'll add the rest of them in here. just done is laid out this pool and I'll give you a little sense of what each of the lines mean. It'll help you understand a little bit proportionally what things are. If you look at the blue line that I have painted on the ground, that indicates water. That's water's edge. The orange line that's roughly a foot behind it, that's going to be the back of the coping to give a sense of there's a foot between the concrete patio and the water. And then the outer edge is the patio. So that'll give you a sense of the amount of patio space. Along the back side there, there is no patio. That'll be all natural. Uh, the sun shelf, this indicates basically from the blue line forward to this orange line is going to be the shallow sun ledge area. The spa is indicated here with the blue circle. Again, and that'll also have a one foot coping around it. That's raised roughly this far, 18 inches above the pool patio be that height and it will spill over from the spa into the pool aiming this way a little bit toward the house so it'll, part of it will spill over the steps right here under the, the pool steps and then at the other end here is the waterfall to give a sense of scale and size of what the waterfall will be the waterfall basically starts right here so we're down at grade here our first boulder is here the other end of the waterfall is right here basically where this tree is. That would be the stump where we're gonna carve a stump into the waterfall. Scale wise, right here, we're looking, we're roughly this tall. The challenge with a yard like this is because it's flat, we don't wanna make the waterfall too big and it'll look out of place. We don't want to make it look too small as if we just put a portable unit on the side. So scale wise, if we get about four feet of elevation will be enough. We have two planter pockets which are indicated here which, well, again, will allow us to get some height. And then there'll be some balancing landscaping on both sides, which will afford that uh, ability to hide the fact that it's sticking out of the ground. 
But so if you picture here, a waterfall is somewhat about this tall, tumbling down to water level, its final fall into the, into the pool right here. So if one set of water falling there, one set of water falling here, and then kind of a mix as it gets up to the top right up here. Last feature is back here is the fire pit. Again, the fire pit will match the spa, will match the waterfall in terms of its surround. And there will be a smaller patio here um, around so that they can put chairs and whatnot around the, uh, around the um, fire pit itself. And that's it.